This video will discuss audience analysis and the role and purpose it has in the public speaking process. So let's start off with what is audience analysis. First, audience analysis is the gathering of information about the audience so that you can adapt your speech accordingly. We need to know as much as we can about the audience and about the situation so that we can make adjustments to our speech both beforehand and during the speech uh, to the audience um, so that we can best fit that speech for that particular audience and that particular occasion. So the purpose of audience analysis is, is there are a multitude of purposes. First of all, we want to learn the attributes and the motivations of the audience uh, so that we can identify with the audience members, so that we can make that connection with them. It's hard to connect with, with an audience or with an individual if you don't know anything about them. So we learn about the audience so that we can make that connection and, and uh, sort of uh, develop common ground with them so we can uh, increase what we call identification with the audience. Secondly, we want to answer the question of the audience themselves. What's in it for me? Or with them, sometimes we say, what's in it for me? Audiences are what we call egocentric. They have uh, their, their own lives, their own things going on, and so they're, they're most concerned with those things that directly affect them. So they want the question answered, what's in it for me? Why should I listen to this speech? Why should I believe you as a speaker? Why should I care anything about this? Uh, what's it got to do with me? Or with them, what's in it for me? We also want to craft our, our speech to the audience in terms of the topic of the speech, the language of the speech, and the sources of the speech. These are all things that we need to craft uh, specifically to this audience to find the most effective use of those things and the most effective uh, presentation of those things. So we want to craft our speech to the audience in terms of topic selection, in terms of the language we're using, in terms of the sources that we're using for supporting material, uh, and, and all such things that go along with that. We want to craft our speech specifically to this audience, uh, and delivery falls in that line as well. We need to, th to think about our delivery for that particular audience. Then we finally, we, we do audience analysis so that we can select a target audience for our, our speech. And this is particularly important in persuasive speeches, but it, I mean, really it applies to all speeches, but especially in persuasive speeches, we talk a lot about finding our target audience. Uh, not every topic and not every um, stance on that topic is going to hit an audience right where they live. So sometimes we have to identify that part of the audience to whom we're most speaking so that we can identify the best strategies and the best things that we just talked about so we can identify the best use of language, the best sources to use, the best delivery to use for that particular audience. But we can't do any of that. We can't do any of that without knowing who our audience is. So we, we uh, participate in audience analysis and we engage in audience analysis so that we are better able to select our target audience for that speech. Finally, we need to prepare accordingly for that speech situation. Where is this speech going to be given? This is all part of an audience analysis too. Are we giving this in a huge lecture hall or is it a small classroom? Are we going to be outdoors or indoors? What kind of technology are we going to have? You know, we need to know as much about the situation as we can as well. Uh, is this going to be you know, an audience that's hostile to us or, or motivated towards us? Are they all there for some single purpose? Or is it just a random collection of people that, that can come in and go as they wish? We need to know all of this about the situation so that we can best prepare for that specific situation and that particular audience. So there are a variety of different types of audience analysis we can do. We're going to focus on a couple in this video, the first of which is demographic analysis. And demographic analysis is basically just looking at a snapshot of that audience, looking at it in, in broad strokes, looking at that audience in broad strokes, and kind of defining them by, by categories. It's just a first glance look you know, at, at kind of who our audience is and, and who our audience is made up of. So we look at things here in demographic analysis like age. Uh, you know, our age, the age of our audience is going to make a difference. Are we speaking to, you know, senior citizens or are we speaking to a class of fourth graders? That's going to impact our language use and, and our delivery style and all kinds of things. So we need to know what age are, is, is, is our audience and that will also affect our references and things. So uh, how old is our audience? What's the basic makeup of sex and gender in our audience? We need to be aware of that as well. What about their ethnic and cultural background? Uh, those are things that are, going to, that are going to impact the way that we speak to the audience and the way that we think about the audience and the, the way that we approach these different topics. So we need to be aware of what's the predominant ethnic and cultural background. Or again, is there a mix of those things? Do we not have a predominant one in this audience? So um, that'll affect a lot of things. We need to understand what the socioeconomic status of the audience is. And by that, we mean three basic things. Uh, what is their income? What is their occupation? 
and what is their education. All those things combined going to make up what is their socioeconomic status. So um, those will impact, again, the kind of language we use, the topics we choose, all types of things. These are all part of demographic analysis. Also included in demographic analysis are things like religion, uh, political affiliation, and group membership can be an important one. Again, if, you're, if they're all there for a single purpose of, because they're part of a group, that can be significant. If you know that you're going to be speaking to a gathering of the, the National Rifle Association, that will inform your topic choice, that will inform your languages, that will inform you know, what you know about that audience, what they all have in common is that group affiliation. So group membership can be a, a very important um, demographic analysis factor in, in determining you know, what we're going to talk about and how we're going to talk about it. So we need to understand all of these things, and these are just a few of the pieces of demographic analysis, but, but they just give us a broad look, and again, a broad strokes of, of who, who's making up that audience. And you want to be careful not to stereotype and things like that, but this can be really helpful in taking just a snapshot to understand who our audience is. So we can conduct demographic analysis. In addition to demographic analysis, we can conduct what we call specific analysis. And there are a couple of factors in specific analysis, what we call specific analysis. Um, first and foremost, interest and knowledge. What do you know about the audience's interest level and knowledge level of this topic? Do they know anything about the topic? Are they there because they're interested and have chosen to be there? Uh, that makes a huge difference as opposed to are they forced to be there whether they have any interest in that topic or not. If, if they don't, then you may need to help them develop and you may develop some interest and you may need to, to do some things that, at the beginning that draw that audience in and help them become interested, right? And what's their knowledge level? Are they starting at a higher level? Should we be using a higher level of language? Should, should we skip some of the basic you know, things in, our, in this speech and jump into the deeper end of the pool with this topic? Or do they are, have very limited knowledge of this topic? Are they not aware of it at all? In which case we need to start at the very beginning, right? So we need to know uh, what's the interest and knowledge level of that topic of the audience specifically as it relates to the topic that you'll be speaking about. We also need to understand what's their kind of psychological makeup and do an analysis of what's their what's their psychological makeup here, their attitudes, their beliefs, and their values. In other words, uh, who is our audience in, in terms of their psychological makeup? Who is our audience in terms of their multicultural makeup? What what's their what's their language of common if they have one? What kind of cognition and ethnocentrism might we be facing here? And what's their communication style? So we need to understand, you know, kind of the multicultural background that's going to inform the way that we approach a lot of these things, especially in terms of delivery and language choices and reference choices and source choices and all those types of things. That uh, These are all choices that we have that will be influenced by this specific analysis. Okay? So we have demographic analysis, we have specific analysis, we also have what we call a situational analysis. We need to understand... Again, what's the situation? We touched on this before. The purpose of audience analysis is to understand, in part, the situation that we're getting into. So things like, first of all, is this a captive audience? Are they there because they have to be there? That makes a huge difference in the motivation and their interest level and all kinds of things like that. So we need to understand, is this a captive audience or is this an audience who's there because they're choosing to be there? Uh, so we need to, to kind of evaluate that and understand that. What's the number of audience members? Are we speaking to a really large group or a really small group? That will influence everything from um, the, the way that we are delivering our message in terms of, you know, are we using a microphone? Are we bound to this lectern that we're speaking in front of because that's where the microphone is at? Are we going to be able to move around? What kind of activities or how interactive is this going to be? What kind of visual aids are we going to use? Um, are we going to be able to, to be you know, using visual aids that people can see um, like because I'm holding it? Or is it a larger group that we're going to have to display some things on, on a screen and it may impact our visual aids that we're going to use? So I, there are all kinds of things. And typically we know that the, the larger the group, the more formal the language because you're going to have a lot of you know kind of mixed things here in terms of ages and backgrounds and things like that. So we tend to It'll be more conservative and formal in language with larger groups. So what's the number of audience members? How many people are we going to have in this group? What are the time restraints? You know, are, are we limited in time to, you know, 15 minutes or half an hour or whatever? You know, what are our time restraints? What's the time frame that we're looking at? What are the expectations of our speech goals? What, what is the, you know, when we're asked to speak at, in different situations, what are the, the people who are asking us to do this, what are they expecting? What are they? What are they hoping to get that the audience gets out of this? So, uh, and we want to try and match our goals up with what their expectations are as well. What's the rhetorical situation? Is this a you know real formal situation, or is it more of a you know lighthearted after dinner speech, or is this a 
is it a eulogy or is it a celebration and a toast and things like that so what's the rhetorical situation so we can match up with that as well okay? so we need to, to thoroughly understand what the situation is We've talked about demographic analysis, about situational analysis, about specific analysis. Now, one of the questions is, where do we get all this information? I've said we need all this information. We've got to have all this information. So where do we get it all? Well, there are a variety of methods of analysis that we can go to. First of all, we can ask the person who invited us. Somebody, if we're speaking at an event, it's not likely that we just walked in off the street and said, hey, I'd like to talk to you people. And they said, okay. You know, someone has asked us to be there. Someone has set this all up. So we can ask that person questions. Hey, how many people should I expect to be here? Where is the speech going to be given? What's the physical environment? What's the, kind of the makeup of your group? Tell me about the ages and different things. So we can ask that person some questions. We can also research that group online if they have an online presence. You know, and then we can research that group and find out who are they, what's important to them, all those types of things. We can do some direct observation if we have an opportunity. If we have the opportunity to either be there beforehand or, or go sometime before we're speaking to this group, and we can go and see not only who this group is and, and what their makeup is, but we can see the physical environment where we might be speaking and try and get a handle on that beforehand. That can be very valuable. Uh, we can do some inference. We can we can make some assumptions about this group based on, you know, somebody calls and says, hey, we'd like you to speak to our Rotary Club, or we'd like to speak to our chapter of the National Rifle Association. We can make some inferences about what those people might be interested in and uh, what the makeup of that group might be, right? We can also do some audience surveys or interviews if we have an opportunity to do that, if we have the time and chance to do that. We can conduct surveys. We can put together either written or online surveys. We can we can go talk to people that are part of that group and do some interviews. Uh, so there are a variety of ways that we can gather this information. I encourage you to take advantage of all of those, any of those and all of those, as you have the opportunity. Finally, if we're going to survey the audience, we want to make sure that we have effective survey questions. And so there are a variety of types of questions you can ask. The first are what we call open-ended questions. And these are questions intended just to give the person a, an opening to talk through, right? So we're asking things here like, what do you think about this? Or what's your opinion on this? And, and then just let them go. They're more open-ended. They give the, 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 the interviewee an opportunity to be more expressive and more deeply. Sometimes we either because people aren't as responsive to open-ended questions or because we don't have time uh, to issue those types of open-ended questions, we, we may ask what we call closed-ended questions, which have a more limited uh, type of response and a limited option, uh, limited number of options for responding, right? And there are a variety of ways that you can accomplish closed-ended questions as well. First, we have what we, what we call our basic fixed alternative questions. And these are things like true-false questions, yes or no questions, multiple choice questions, where you're really limiting the audience to either this or that, like true or false, or, or yes or no, or a more, you know, broader but more still limited set of responses through multiple choice. Uh, they can pick one of these three or four items, right? So uh, those are basic fixed alternative questions. They have very specific, very fixed options for responses. Another option in, in the closed-ended question would be what we call ordered categories, where as you can see in this example, we're asking people to kind of rank or rate uh, their their choice or or their you know, importance of the importance for them of these specific items, right? From one to five, for example, we're put, asking them to put them in order. So we can ask ordered category questions, which still are, are sort of limited, fixed alternative uh, answers because the, the alternatives are, are set for those people, but it gives them a chance to kind of move things around a little bit more. Finally, we have what we call Likert scale or Likert type questions. Uh, and this is, you've seen these all the times. I'm sure you've, you've done a lot of these in surveys yourself. You know, how satisfied are you with this? You know, on one end, you have very satisfied. On the other, not satisfied. Sometimes it's a number ranking. You know, you choose one for, you know, not very satisfied or five for very satisfied. And you can use Likert scale questions for uh, any, any variety of purposes that you set up. So, again, it, it presents the audience with some options here and some freedom to choose, but within this set, uh, closed-ended spectrum of, of responses. So audience analysis is really a crucial part of the speech preparation and delivery process. So uh, take your time to get to know your audience. It's really important that you keep that audience in mind, at the forefront of your mind at all times when preparing and, and delivering the speech. So the more information you can gather about the audience, the better through audience analysis. If you have any questions, Feel free to email me. I'm always available via email and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have about audience analysis 
or any other part of the public speaking process. Thank you.